and there you go. My name's Screamheart, and this is Rush Nato. If one thing's been consistent with Diablo 4, Tornado has always been good on Druid, and that hasn't changed in Season 3. Not only have I pushed this build to get way more damage than other Tornado builds I've seen, but I also managed to make it even faster. There might be a slight buildup to the DPS, but it actually out DPS's Lightning Storm. As you can see, we're able to use our Trample constantly, which means we never stop. Trample also acts as a battering ram in order to get through groups of enemies that you don't want to wait for. It's very good and it's a lot of fun. Now, if you guys like my content, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm also live on Twitch pretty often, so if you want to come by, it's twitch.tv slash screamheart. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the build. First up on our skills, we've got Tornado. Tornado is going to be our main source of damage. When we start a skill rotation, we're going to walk up to the enemies. We're going to spam tornadoes towards them. As long as you make sure you always get a kill with your tornado before you use your trample, you're going to have it constantly. Speaking of trample, this is going to be a great source of spirit, unstoppable, CC, movement, and damage. It actually does enough damage that I decided to put skill points into it. Next up, we've got our ultimate. Petrify is going to be a great way to CC all of the mobs in the area and make sure they can't attack you. It also increases your damage against them so you can kill them faster. I typically only use this for elite packs, but it's definitely worth using. Now for the companion skills, which are wolves, poison creeper, and ravens, I don't use the actives on these too much. If anything, I'll use the active on ravens to get a little more critical strike chance. But I almost never use poison creeper, and I definitely don't use wolves. For equipment, we're going with tempest roar for the helmet, mad wolf's glee for the chest piece. Now keep in mind, you can put juggernauts on if you're doing like tier 100 dungeons, but if you're not doing tier 100 dungeons, mad wolf's glee is going to be your best choice because you're going to get extra damage and movement speed. And if you happen to have armor on your boots and double armor on your amulet, you could probably adjust yourself to where you could wear Mad Wolf's Glee all the time. For your gloves, you're going to want to have Storm Chasers. For your pants, you want Tibalt's Will. For your boots, you're going to want Ghost Walker Aspect. For your weapon, you want Shepherd's Aspect. On your amulet, you're going to go with Retaliation. One ring is going to be Hunter Zenith, and the other ring is going to be Ring of Starless Skies. If you don't have the Ring of Starless Skies, you can use other aspects here that will increase your damage. You could wear Stampede permanently or you could go with something like Umbral if you're having spirit issues. Now I typically keep Mad Wolf's Glee and a Ring of Stampede in my inventory because you want to replace your Hunter Zenith and your chest piece with those two whenever you do bossing. For the stats on the gear, on the chest piece I recommend going with all damage reduction stats and one max health stat. For the gloves, we're going with attack speed, critical strike chance, and ranks to tornado. For the last stat, you can go with willpower, all stats, lucky hit chance, or werewolf critical damage. On the boots, we're going with movement speed, spear cost reduction, total armor while in werewolf form, and willpower or all stats. If you have your spirit managed well, you probably don't need the spirit cost reduction here, so you could just go all stats and willpower. On our weapon, we're going with a two-handed axe implicit, and we're going to go with all stats, willpower, damage to close, and damage to distant. For our amulet, we're going to go with movement speed, ranks to and venom, willpower, and you can go with spirit cost reduction or some type of damage reduction. Like I said before, if you're trying to wear Mad Wolf's Glee all the time, you could go with double armor here, but you need to make sure you always have movement speed and venom on it. For our bossing ring, we're going to want to go with critical strike chance, damage to close, damage to distant, and for the final stat, I recommend critical damage or werewolf critical damage. For our gems, we're going to go with ruby on the armor, emerald in the weapon, and then for your accessories, you're probably going to go with one or two diamonds and skulls. How many you need here is going to depend on your own personal resistances, but if you've done everything correctly, you should be close to maxing out without any gems in your accessories. You should be breaking about 40% critical strike chance. And here's a quick slide down my stats in case you want to see any others. For Essential Construct, we're going to be going with Tempest, with Evernight, Resource, and Safeguard. If you don't have Evernight, you can go with Efficiency or Swift. For our other skill, we're going with Flash of Adrenaline, and here we're doing Duration, Tactical, and Genesis. If you don't have Genesis, you can go with Fortify. For Spirit Boons, we're going with Wariness, Iron Feather, Avian Wrath, Energize, and Masochistic. And if you're bossing, feel free to change Iron Feather to Scythe Talons. For a skill tree, we're going to be dropping a couple points into basics, so we move to the next tree, but we're not going to actually be putting that on our bar. We're going to max out Tornado and get Raging Tornado. We're going to max out all three of the passives here in these nodes. We're going to move down, we're going to put two into Ancestral Fortitude, and then we're going to move down to our companion area, where we're going to get one Wolves, one Poison Creeper, and we're going to get Ravens and go down to Brutal Ravens. We're going to max out Elemental Exposure, max out Trample, and go to Natural Trample. Max out in Venom and put one point in Toxic Claws. Then we're going to be getting Petrify and one additional point. We're going to max out Defiance, Circle of Life, and Resonance. We're also going to max out Quick Shift and Heightened Senses. And just so you're not confused about Resonance, I'm only putting the points in here for the 6% extra damage. Because Wild Impulses is only additive right now and not multiplicative, it's not worth putting the points here. So instead, we're going to get a little extra damage down here. 
and I just realized the entire time I was recording, I had Lupine Ferocity in instead of Ursine Strength. That was a mistake. It's not a terrible passive to go with, but Ursine Strength is more consistent damage, and it gives 20% HP. Ah, uh, the stats look so much better with Ursine Strength on. For our Paragon boards, we're going to be putting Outmatch in the starter board. We're going to be moving up from here, attaching Ancestral Guidance, where we're going to be getting the Earth and Sky Glyph. We'll move left from here. We're going to attach the Constricting Tendrils board, and we're going to be putting Territorial here. Territorial is your most important glyph, so make sure you level this up first. Moving to the right, we're going to be attaching the Thunderstruck board and putting Fang and Claw. Then we'll move up, and we're going to attach the Lust for Carnage board. And here we're going to be putting Guzzler. Finally, up from here, we're going to be attaching the Heightened Malice board, and we're going to be putting Spirit here. Pay attention to your Thunderstruck bonus here. Right now it says 47% for me, and if I wear my bossing ring, this goes up to 60%. This multiplier comes from stacking your additive damage to close and damage to distant enemies. That means you're not only getting the additive damage if enemies are close or distant, but you're also getting a multiplicative bonus here. So make sure you prioritize those stats. Now interestingly enough, I think that Tornado and Lightning Storm end up being pretty similar. They both have fairly similar DPS, they're both caster builds, they can both do damage at close and long range, they both have pretty good AoE, they can build similar mobility, and you can use the same trick with Trample for both. So really, you can choose whichever one you want, and they're going to be about the same. Overall, I kind of like the survivability of the tornadoes. And I also like that I can just click once and then move away. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll see you in my next video. Catch you later.